found a piece of wood with rubber feet on it, uh, felt feet, but I'm sure it's salvageable. I think we need to order more glue, my love. Wood glue? Yeah. Do you have a knob though? Uh, probably. Stuart has been downstairs cutting some wood and I think he's trying it on now to put between the water tongues. How's it going? Well, I'm all good. You're not happy? No. Why are you not happy? Uh, because it's just not working. Stu wasn't very happy with his work, but we've had a little chat and a bit of, after a bit of sinking. <laughs> what are you sinking on? Um, it looks like we have a plan and it could actually work. The plan that Stu had was screw through here, this wood, on both sides. But the problem here was that the mast is going to be in place. And he was thinking, how are we going to unscrew it if we ever need to unscrew it? But... I thought, well, we can do it with a socket. So we'll be putting bolts here. Yeah, I think they're called lag, lag or latch bolts. Okay. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So that's sorted. And then we were thinking also that we want the tanks to sit somewhere. Because at the moment, let me see if I can show you. If you go underneath, you can see there's actually quite a big gap so the only place where the tanks are sitting is like somewhere there on the side in just one spot and that's probably not good for the tank it could break so we come with a solution that will be adding a piece of wood to this. A lot of you are going to say, yeah, 200 kilos pushing down on screws. You are very right. Yeah, and uh, that was our, our worry, but we're going to fiberglass it. Yeah, we'll screw it, do a bit of fiberglassing on it. So the wood will go all the way like that on both sides. So well, at least the tanks. There'll be a gap here, not all the way, but here where my Yeah, but there. like it will be yeah. longer, not like that. Yeah. And the tanks will be at least sitting there. And then I think we need to think about maybe putting something on the putting hole. something on the hole as well. But that will come step by step. So you didn't waste your time today, Stu. Um magic fingers day there's also going to be that piece of wood there it's going to be another done. stringer yeah it's going to be done like we've done those ones so this is going to be held in place by this wood this wood and the ribs
This is the piece of wood that is too fabricated yesterday. Uh, those are pretty serious words, honey. I wouldn't say fabricated. <laughs> so we've temporarily put it in place with some wedges. And this is how it's going to look, kind of. So it's obviously flat with the ribs because this is where the floor also is going to be sitting. Or the floors. The floors. And yeah, that's how it's going to work. So there's a um, void underneath so the water still can run, no problem. And we're going to fiberglass this all together so it's stronger. Hopefully. Yeah, mm. hopefully. And uh, we just tried it out. We'll obviously epoxy it as well. Yeah, yeah, everything is going to be epoxy in the beach. But... It was a little bit of a brainstorming day. Tanks in, tanks out, tanks in. Us getting rather frustrated. <laughs> yep, absolute nightmare. But I think we have a plan. Yeah, we basically like poo pooed the plan we had. We already explained, we showed you, we we fabricated this piece of wood with yeah. this other piece of wood. First plan, it was was not so good. So we have a second plan. We're gonna do a demo. A demo? <laughs> yeah. All right, so I think it goes this way. It's to cut some pieces of hardwood mm. that are gonna be stuck on the floor and then tapped in a little bit with some fiberglass so they stay in place. Some people are probably going to say, well, the bilge isn't going to flow. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, they don't go all the way to the side. So the water, if there's any, is going to still flow. And even if there's a little bit of water that gets Whoop. stuck in here, it's a boat. It'll be floating and it'll be rocking. So the water will rock to the sides and it will run down. It's not that There's bad. the board. As the board, there's going to be a screw in place. I think it's just the board's a bit bent. Oh, I'll be fine once it's yeah. screwed on. I don't know how many tanks, how many tanks, no, how many times these tanks have gone in and out. And then in between, just a little bit of foam, so they yeah, don't rub. In between them, there's going to be foam, so they don't rub each other. But that's it. We've eliminated the wood. We don't think it's needed, because where Stuart's legs are, there's going to be pieces of wood like these ones. Yeah, demo. Like that, but quite tied in, like yeah. there. So, and they will be strapped in as well. And then so they're not going to be any movement and also once the bottom shelf that we're creating now is built we're going to be having a look on the sides as well to build some wedges so it's also sitting on those wedges we basically want that because right now the tanks have a different shape than the hull because they were not meant for these boats. Well, they're just or, parallel and the boat yeah. is like that shape. They're like on an the angle and the boat is is um, yeah. not angled <laughs> <laughs> so yeah the problem is that you put them on and they just don't sit right they just like hovering and just sitting in one corner there one yeah, there it's only a few points that yeah. are actually touching so we're trying to increase we want... the surface area yeah we, we just want them to sit right like kind of like a glove <laughs> So yeah, that's it. Basically, our plans changed again, but I think we got it right now. And all we have to do is sick flex those blocks in place and then tap them in. We need to also sand a little bit, but there is no electric for some yeah. reason. Yeah, the electric stopped working today. So we can't do it. So we're just waiting on power. Now we wait, then we sand, and then we tap. 
just been sanding. Yeah, seems smooth enough. Now just got to add a second layer of this G4. Got a glove, got a rag, got it all. Many people have asked us why we're using Sigflex to fillet some joints and I'm going to try and explain, so bear with me. The main thing of the Sigflex is not really for structural purpose, it's just to make a smooth a transition for the filleting, basically make fillets. So as you can imagine on a dead 90 degree you're not going to be able to fiberglass that, won't happen. So with the fillets you can, well it just rounds it smoother. There's probably a technical way to describe it, and uh, I just don't know what it is. So we've used it on a few places. On the joists, one of, well, one of the main places, because we wanted a slightly sort of squishy, softer, almost rubbery surface to eliminate any squeaks that are possible. And we've done the same here on the bearers for the fuel uh, water tank. And as you can tell, oh, I should move the camera down. It does offer some rigidity, so it will hold it in place, it will tab it in, and most of the strength will come from the tabbing, not as such from the Sikaflex. It's only used as a tabbing compound. We got the idea of using Sikaflex for the tabbing from a friend. There's a German couple here at the boatyard who are fixing up a Formosa, a classic sailing yacht from the 70s as well, but a very different style and Andreas seems to be the go-to guy when I have any slight epoxy issues or resin issues and I found you know we've built up a bit of a friendship and he's been uh, you know very thorough with his advice so we seem happy with the results let us know what you think well not the best start of the day the electric's still broken so not a lot we can do there the neighbors lent me some extension leads, but I've got like 70 meters of extension leads and it just keeps tripping. So pretty annoyed, but what can you do? Stuff breaks. They might get it fixed soon, but we'll see. Anyway, fiberglass would have turned up. That's pretty good. Check out this stuff. This looks pretty cool. Now I think this is a, a 700 triax. Check this out. Three layers, looks pretty interesting. Yeah, it will soak up, uh, soak up the resin. So pretty excited to see how this works in a real world situation. Yeah, it looks pretty strong, pretty thick. So hopefully that will do for uh, strengthening stuff or whatever we use it for. But yep, there's that, plus just the resin. Some 300 came, which is pretty pretty standard. I'll give you a little glimpse of that. At least the weather's nice. I managed to use the Hoover for like two minutes and it tripped. So hopefully that's enough just to uh, tab in these uh, joints. The tab, do the tabbing for the water tanks do the tabbing for the water tanks should be able to do that this afternoon no, that's your, that's your woven roving or whatever 300 yeah. it's a good standard but as I say we're super excited to try this 700 plus we've got a little bit more filler bearing compound stuff and, uh, yeah, that is that
exciting times. Now that the tabbing over there is done, I'm just prepping this door and wall to be primed. And I'm also just now testing this little gadget that you can see in the mirror, which is a microphone adapter for the GoPro. Because we used to have these, <laughs> this little spongy thing that is it's like an old sock. Uh, I don't know, it's just falling apart. It's supposed to be for the wind, but when the wind was blowing strong, it felt like it was gonna just fly off. So one of our patrons got this little gadget, and it's super cool, hopefully better than sound. I think it's gonna be better. Nice, thank you. Here we have Marina, mixing some primer. I hope I have enough to do this. And the primer is going on. My paintings to me. Oh, wonderful, honey. Finish. How long did that take? Uh, 17 seconds. <laughs> Not the recording, the painting. An uh, hour or two. Nice. We're gonna do a bit of dumpster diving. We know you all love the dumpster diving, so we're gonna have a go and see what we can find today. The boat here is coming back to life, so there might be some treasure. Anything? No. Oh, an organizer. An organizer. Of a bit. Yeah, no. A deflated fender with a broken sock. Oh, some some crisps. <laughs> Ooh, crispies. <laughs> I'm eating well tonight. Uh, no, this is actual rubbish. rubbish. Uh, Nothing. What a day. Oh, no. Well, there is that snorkel in there. <laughs> this is snorkel, you yeah, know. <laughs> Thank you. We just saw someone and they, they told us, no, it's not worth it. It's nothing in there. But we don't trust them. <laughs> they might be hiding some treasure. Oh, another defender. A gun, a toy gun. A sink. <laughs> yeah, <almost looks> out <laughs> of we threw the sink away, and someone's there. Yeah, someone's taking the top of it. No hardwood. Nothing. Oh, we found a cable. 
which is good because we are no we have no electric so we have to run the cable through the road to the other side check this boat out scruffy looking thing <laughs> Oh, it smells like the sea. <laughs> it's got a lot of papers on the window, so I think this might have been abandoned somewhere. And it's been seized or something. Hopefully someone's going to repair it, it's cool. Pretty chunky propeller. <laughs> and that's it for the day. The sun's going down, so it's probably beer time. Yesterday, stressor hunt didn't go so well, but today, a treasure came to us. There is a new couple in the boatyard and they're from the Netherlands. They're doing some work on their boat and they know we love treasure hunting. So they, <laughs> they told Stuart, hey, there's some... Uh... Uh, actually, uh, Ben brought them. Ah, he brought them to us. <laughs> yeah, oh, thank you. Yeah. Only one works, so it's, it's quite a nice slider. Yeah. Is good for us? One is good for us, the rest is... Uh... How many do we need? Thing. But uh, we'll just use a little plastic one and uh, he's at the top of the sail. Maybe. Okay, they look fancy those. Yeah, the batten holders. But I'm sure if we get a new sail then it'll come with uh, sliders. sliders. Anyway, I never thought I would say this but I am really excited about the delivery of uh, this fiber bus. We're gonna have our first go doing the outside patches. So he's got three layers of fiberglass in three different directions that's why it's tri, tri how is it called? Tri -ax, tri -ax, so <laughs> this little bundle is so heavy so hopefully this might be if not the last round probably second to last because this is so thick, it's probably going to feel quite a lot. Next mission, bulkhead, remove, replace, angle, joint, and then another piece of wood at the back. We'll see how far we can get with this. I don't know how solid it is, but we'll make it more solid. Yeah. Quality installation. Once we've removed the, this piece of wood, the bulkhead, we need to investigate the patches, the seacock patches that we covered from the exterior. We have to now do the interior pieces. So now we start to work on the next section of the bilge and the engine room. Pretty exciting stuff. Yay! Woo! We're almost at the end.
The arsenal is out. Stu is in grinding mode. Yeah, we've just got to grind under that bulkhead. We've just marked the areas that are going to need grinding. It's basically anywhere where we need to repair or tab. Hopefully not that long. Maybe half an hour, 40 minutes, but uh, best rug up as best as possible. Okay, we'll be back reporting once the cloud of dust has dissipated. <laughs> the cloud of dust is gone and everything is grinded now. Stu has also sanded a little bit of the wall because we're going to overlap a piece of wood in there. So he's pretty much ready. Oh, my phone. Ready to go. So next week you might see a wall over here. What do you think, Stu? Oh yeah, no, we'll do it over the weekend. Uh, that needs replacing too, sweet, because then we can finish the floor. Well, that's a, those are big words, finish well, we can the at least floor. start looking at getting the fuel tank in. The next tank in yeah. here. The fueling tank. Just got to remove more of the galley. But that's okay. Build it back better, as they say. Thank you all for watching this week. I hope you enjoyed. Just much of the same. Step by step, we're getting closer to putting the floor in, which is pretty, pretty good news. <laughs> we always say the same thing. We're not making false promises. <laughs> It's like the, uh, the donkey and the carrot. <laughs> We're going to have a floor. We are going to have a floor. Thank you to all the Patreons, the coffee, the PayPal, the super thanks. Or the super like. We're very grateful no, for... No, super thanks. <laughs> yeah. We're very grateful for all your help. It really means the world to us. None of this would happen without the help from you guys. So please subscribe, please like, give us a thumbs up. Yeah, that's important. It helps out a lot. Comment and like, please. Yeah, send us some comments. It would be uh, nice getting to know a few of you. There's a few regulars, so yeah. <laughs> keep them coming. It's always nice to see who's watching our show. But, well, have a good week, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye! Uh, thank you to all the Patreons, the Super Thanks, the Coffee, the Patreons. I've said that. I'll say that again. <laughs> Thanks to all... Please, I'm trying to work here.